Live from Soho, New York City, it's Wearable Electronics with Becky Stern. That's me. Welcome to the show, everybody. With me is Phil, Mr. Lady Ada himself. Hello. Each week we talk about wearable electronics, as the show's title might imply. <laughs> A lot of fun stuff today. If we didn't talk about wearable electronics, um, it'd be awkward. It would be awkward. It'd be false advertising <laughs> yeah. also. What's on today's show, Phil? On today's show, the code is... Good vibes. 10% off everything in the floor and wearables category expires 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tonight. Get your wearables on. And later we're going we're gonna to sing some soul music for you. We might. Next up, Wearable Wednesday. Every week we blog about cool stuff and debut a new project. Component of the week. Something new and exciting and vibrating. Tools we... So sorry, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> it's tools, okay. Tools we it's love are t t tools that we use every day in our videos, and we show you how to use them, and they don't stab us. That's right. And questions and answers. You have wearable questions. Becky has wearable answers. If you ask a question uh, during the show, you can post it up in the comments on YouTube or Google Plus or Twitter or wherever, or not during the show, and I will save them up for a future episode. And if your question is featured on the show, you are entered to win the show's giveaway. Today we have a really awesome prize, so ask a question anytime. Okay. All that and more on Wearable Electronics with Becky Stern. All right. Quick, going to pay some bills. Don't forget, good vibes. And you'll see why this is a code soon. Uh, this is 10% off in the floor and wearables category expires 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tonight. Did the uh, time switch mess you up at all? Yes. What happened? There's My apartment only gets like an hour of direct sunlight a day, and it used to be between 7 and 8 a.m., and now it is between 8 and 9 a.m. Uh, so you have like a Stonehenge thing mm. going on where there's only a little bit yep, of light? Yeah, Stonehenge yeah. thing, and it's it's nicer in the winter because it's that out, that sunlight hits me when I'm like waking up, and now yeah. it hits like after I already should have gotten up. Yeah. And so like the dog is still lounging, and I'm already up, and I'm like, oh, I want to be back in bed in the sunny spot. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> the thing that I noticed is there is one test of what device will be an Internet of Things device now. Because everyone's like, oh, what's going to be the Internet of Things? It's everything that didn't update on its own. So yeah. uh, phones <laughs> did, cable box, all this yeah. stuff is starting to do. Whatever uh -huh. didn't update in your home, one day will Microwave. be... Yeah. My microwave already has a .gov URL on a button on the microwave. Does a what button? .gov. It has a like myplate.gov oh. URL on the... like. The government right tells me how much food is on my plate button oh, okay. on the microwave. Burp. It's like built in above the stove. And that didn't update by itself. I was surprised because I thought I've had yeah. a .gov URL on it that, that GE and the NSA was spying on me through my microwave. But Not maybe yet. it's just a ruse. They didn't update the clock because they wanted me to think it was stupider than it is. Yeah. I'm a little bit of a conspiracy theorist, though. I think. <laughs> no, no, no. Snowden has a list of which microwave meals are okay. Lean, uh -huh. lean cuisine, totally okay. Totally okay? Well, yeah. Hungry, hungry man, not okay. <laughs> so um, surveillance-free <laughs> frozen meals. Yeah. Um, so what I thought was interesting is between like last, maybe not last year, but maybe the year before. So thermostats, mm -hmm. if they were on a timer, did not update because they were disconnected from the web. And now Nest yeah. is something I believe that Nest updates because it's internet connected. True. Sure. So anyways, if you guys are looking for things around your house that might be internet connected, one a Internet of Things, it'll probably be the things that did not update. Like your coffee maker. Um, coffee maker. I think. I think it's interesting the way daylight savings used to be like this thing, yeah, everybody set your clocks. And it was like a thing we all did together. And now because um, your devices, like your phone and your computer, update automatically, it's like a thing that happens to you instead of a thing we all do together. Yeah. And I think that's pretty interesting. And in the, the last couple of years when, uh, um, yeah. when um, what's his, the, our lovely former president, the one who changed the way daylight savings time worked again. Which one? Bush? Yeah. yeah. Oh, because the way the, the, the He changed it to country. be like two weeks, yeah, in the country, yeah, yeah, yeah. to be like two weeks different from like the rest of the world. Yeah. And like I feel like that, along with all these devices auto-updating, it really feels like daylight savings time is a thing that happens to me. It happens to, to, to you. It's not a, it's, you're not participating. Right. As it's like, hey, guys, let's all get together and, and change the clocks. And change the clocks oh, so that okay. we can all share in this benefit. It's like this thing that happens to you. And this time, everyone was like, oh, man, I'm like, everyone, they're stealing an hour from me. And I'm like... You had that hour already. It was last fall, don't you remember? Yeah. So this attitude, I think, is really is a really interesting like shift yeah. about technology um, and daily savings. Niels deGrasse Tyson, the physicist, said, "Imagine aliens landing, and we had to tell them how we trick ourselves to make us think there's more sunlight." He's like, "Guys, we got to stop doing this." <laughs> yeah. I used to live in Arizona, where they didn't do daily savings time. It makes it made it really difficult to do business with like oh, the rest of the country because yeah. like sometimes, oh, it's just you know it's complicated. So yeah, I didn't I didn't love it this time. My experience was not lovely. However. Wearable electronics, still lovely. Always lovely. 
won't hurt your feelings, won't change the time on you. What? Maybe it will sometimes hurt your feelings, yeah. but most of the time, no. Might be Internet of Things. Not microwavable. <laughs> Wearable Wednesday. All right, Bex. Every week on the blog, we have some lovely things. Uh, Leslie's tearing it up this week with some really cool things. This is a, a belt you can wear for cycling visibility. It's a, um, a product you can buy now that was a funded Kickstarter. So uh, I thought we should talk about that because I think it's interesting. There's a lot of wearables now that start as Kickstarters and if they succeed, um, then the, you know, they become real products. If yeah. they get their backers fulfilled, then they can move on to create, you know, a production run of their product and, um, yeah, we have a rule on the Adafruit blog, and this kind of is a carryover from uh, as I was kind of retiring out from Make with some types of crowdfunding. So on the Make blog, uh, I'm sorry, on the Adafruit blog, we don't cover Kickstarters until they're funded. Because, uh, and believe me, we get about 10 or 15 requests a day because they see us as a high profile, high traffic blog. We have around 11 million page views a month. Mm -hmm. And they really, they're not interested in sharing um, about the project. They just want to get. Um, get as much funded. As, so maybe as they much are marketing. interested in sharing yeah. about the yeah, project. Yeah, maybe later. But... There's all sorts of promises. Right. I promise we'll do stuff later. We just got to get funded. So what we decided is let, let us know after you're funded. Now we're actually getting to another point in, yeah. the, in this, which is after you fulfill the stuff to your backers, then maybe we can cover it on the, the right. blog. Right, or then maybe we can carry it in the store. Then yeah. maybe we can do a teardown. Yeah, and there's two reasons. One, if you're looking to promote your Kickstarter, but all your backers haven't got their stuff and it's late, the, the the audience and the community at Adafruit says, why are you posting this? We didn't even get our stuff yet. Right. And then two... So we only really... We post real things. We yeah. post things when they're real and they exist. Yeah. And then two, if someone who has a Kickstarter is successful and they're looking for retail yeah. or for online sales, and they're like, well, Adafruit, can you start selling it? Because that'll help us because we still have to do stuff with our backers. We always say no because we don't want to send things out <laughs> to people um, ahead of the backers, we don't think right. it's fair. Right. So um, we could have sold a lot of stuff, and I don't want to tell, I don't want to say which companies. I'm not gonna say, but we could have sold stuff to regular customers ahead of what backers would have got. We decided, no, that doesn't uh, feel right. It doesn't feel so, right. No, no, no. Yeah. It's cool, but Anyways. but we do love to see new wearables um, come up through Kickstarter. It's a really interesting platform for starting your business. One of the best because wearables sometimes <laughs> only has two thousand customers, which is. Yeah. Totally okay for wearables. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. So this Speaking is a, a belt, and then um, this one that just got funded that isn't real yet. Yeah. Oh, I really hope it is. Is a, a gesture control ring um, yeah. that where I mean the prototype is real, but yeah. um, that yeah, yeah. works with your mobile device to um, let you write numbers in the air or um, you know secret secret handshake passcode. Oh, that's a good idea. Ooh, secret handshake. Yeah. Can you do this thing? I want to show you because did, did I ever show you this? This when you do the circles different? The, the opposite directions? I can do it like for a couple of revolutions. Yeah, because some people, like, can, most people can do this, most people can do this, but yeah. I think you can do the opposite. I can also yeah. um, touch my, pat my head and rub yeah. my stomach at the same time. So you, no, I can, yeah, okay. not while also hosting a live show though. Really? I'm on, I'm doing <laughs> chat. I just did some billing. I'm tweeting right now. All right. He's taking customer support phone calls. Um, hello. And that. I'm, yeah, with the, oh look, it could be a hello. <laughs> All right. Next up. This is um, somebody tweeted like some pictures from behind the scenes at a London fashion shoot, photo shoot, and those are definitely some Adafruit NeoPixels up in there. Yeah, the NeoPixels um, continue to hit the runway. They hit the, the Burning Man, the Playa. Yeah. They hit the street, they hit the stratosphere. Yeah. They're everywhere. Yeah. We're really happy with NeoPixels. Um, and one of our goals for the year was to get it in more fashion and more places. And uh, what, last week it was in Cosmo? Uh, the the umbrella on Cosmo, yeah, Leslie's Cosmo, um, umbrella project was on Cosmo.com last week. Yeah. And um, yeah, we're seeing some fashion people take notice, and that's really cool. And I hope that our tutorials are helpful for um, skilled fashion designers and seamstresses who want to incorporate electronics into their designs. Okay, cool. next up. I'm going to do the intro for this one. Okay. Are you ready to rumble? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> the, like clanking noise. Yeah. <laughs> um, we sh we could have done taken the different route for this video. <laughs> um, we wanted to. Th this week's video is all about how you um, the differences between Flora and Gemma and what projects are best to use with either one. So a lot of you ask yeah. like, oh, I want to do this project. Can I use Gemma? Should I use Flora? When when should I go for the low cost 
small version, when do I need more power? So we made this video to clarify things for you, but, but it's all very positive, right? Like, Flora can do these things, Gemma can do these things, yeah. not like, Gemma can't do these things. Yeah. And, it's, um, it's Flora versus Gemma. Only one time do I have the boards hit each other yeah. in the thing. But we could have made it like a boxing thing, or, stop motion animation. Or, or wrestling. WrestleMania 7, Becky Stern, I'm taking the title away from you, once and for all. <laughs> the problem is Flora is bigger than Gemma, it's not fair. They're not in the same yeah, weight but Gemma, class. Gemma, but, but Gemma's fast. Scrappy. Yeah. It's not that really that fast. Well, if you throw it. It's this, yeah, yeah. If you throw, yeah, if you throw it, it has a faster terminal velocity than yeah. Flora. All right, so you want to watch this video? <laughs> yes, please, learn the difference between okay. Flora and Gemma. Okay. Flora and Gemma are both sewable microcontrollers made right here at the Adafruit factory. But if you're not sure which one is right for your project, this video is for you. Gemma and Flora are alike in many ways. They're both round with big sewable pads for connecting sensors and lots of NeoPixels with conductive thread. They're both 3-volt regulated devices with a handy JST connector for easily powering your project with a battery. If you're curious, we've got a video about those too. Flora and Gemma both have protection circuitry, so even if you make a mistake like plugging something in backwards, they're both hard to break. You can program both over USB with the special Adafruit version of the Arduino software, which you can download from the Getting Started Guide for each Flora and Gemma. Besides being obviously smaller in diameter than Flora, Gemma's memory is also smaller. Gemma's ATtiny85 chip has 5K of flash available for your program compared to the Atmega32U4 chip on Flora with 28K. So for big projects, Flora is the way to go. You can see that Flora has more pads around the outside. These are connected to the input-output pins on the chip. Gemma has three I.O. pins, and Flora has eight. Some of these pins on Flora are capable of easy connection to sophisticated sensors, like the Flora GPS, color sensor, and motion sensor. Gemma's more geared towards simple sensors, like pressure-sensitive velostat or this tilt ball switch. Since Gemma doesn't have a serial port, it can't send data back to the computer over USB. I like to debug my code using the Flora board, so I can make sure all of the sensor values are in the range I'm looking for. Then comment out the serial commands, and load the code onto Gemma for embedding in my project. Flora's got a few extra features, like an onboard on-off switch, a few more power and ground pads, and USB HID support, which means it can act like a keyboard or mouse. Many of our projects will work with a Flora or Gemma, like the sound-sensitive Amplitai, Firewalker sneakers, and Pac-Man suspenders. But if you're looking to make a sophisticated wearable electronics project like the GPS jacket, piano glove, or city bike helmet, Flora is for you. Gemma is perfect for lightweight and tiny projects like this bangle bracelet, galaxy makeup, and my birthday tiara. If you still have questions about which board to use for your wearables project, post them up in the comments and I'll answer them on our weekly live show, Wearable Electronics with me, Becky Stern. All right. Phil had a really good idea while the video was playing about making um, Mexican wrestling masks with, with the Flora and Gemma on them. That's right. And then and we can make another video. That's right. And then, and then I'm going to take the title. <laughs> I don't know where the... I'm just going to take it. Okay. All right. The title's mine. Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to like use chairs and stuff. I'm just going to totally... I'm playing, yeah, I, I wrestle to win. Yeah. That's how you do it, right? <clears throat> we just need, yeah, we need someone, um, I, I wrestled away. a fight choreographer to work with us yeah. on, this, on this project. Anyways, on a, on a serious note, um, that's an excellent video, so thank you for doing it because there's a lot of times where people said, which one should I use? And so finally we have a video. I feel like we're kind of knocking off all things. Can I wash wearables? Check. What battery should I use? Check. Check. Should I use a Flora or Gemma? Check. Yeah, well, but they're inspired by all of your frequently asked questions. So yeah. the more questions you ask, the more trends I can notice, and then we can make videos about yeah. your commonly asked questions. Yeah. Okay, speaking of, if you want to buy some Flora Gemma, Good Vibes is the co expires tonight at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So you're probably wondering why the code was Good Vibes. Well, 
Because we all want to sing that song, Good Vibrations. Good, good, good. Don't take our video down YouTube for copyright infringement. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is because uh, our music's too good. Um, yeah. The component of the week this week is these uh, vibration sensors. They're very similar to the tilt ball switch we saw last week in that they're a can with some metal inside and they have two wires coming out the bottom. Um, and the sensor is actually pretty similar. It's, there's a middle wire in there. If you want to go to the next picture, it's a cutaway. There's a middle wire, that thicker wire in the oh, middle, yeah. and then that, um, that brassier colored wire wraps around as a spring that kind of like lives around that other wire. So when you shake it, the spring comes in contact with the center wire, um, triggering uh, you know, an electrical connection you can measure with your flora or your Gemma. Yeah. Um, here's the two different kinds. So the one on the top there is the easy or fast trigger one, and the mm. one on the bottom is the hard or slow trigger one. And you can see that the one on the top there has a has a more tightly wound, um, like heavier end spring there that flops more easily against the center wire. And the yeah. one on the bottom, the um, it's not as tightly wound and it's harder to get. You have to hit it harder um, to get it to touch the so center. So that's a close up of the large one. And this is a close-up of the smaller one. Right. Hard to trigger, and the other one is easy to trigger. Yeah. Let's so those are cool. In the um, the plush guts kit, like you could swap this for the tilt ball switch um, without changing the code or anything. Yeah. And it would um, it would work very similarly. Um, it's good for if you're you know. In, as opposed to the tilt ball switch, if the thing will never actually turn upside down or yeah. change orientation, but you want it to be triggered when it's shaking, maybe you want to make a circuit that uh, you ooh, that you clip onto the subway grate, and yeah. when the train goes by and vibrates the street, um, it to detect how much of a vibration. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it's neat that um, if you keep going on this scale, eventually you just get a microphone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Uh huh. That's a, yeah, that's yeah. how microphones work. There you go. <laughs> All right, if you want to buy these. Cause good vibes. They're cheap. They're like two bucks each. Um, yeah. Really cool, basic sensor. Fun to play around with. Get ten. Get yeah, just get ten of them. All right. Ten percent off. Next up, tools we love. What we is love this? tools. What is this thing? These are the helping hands. Oh, I Which thought are, this was like a little robot friend. Which are so helpful. Yeah. Um, no, as seen in the video. See, I like to tie it in. Oh, this is holding okay. the flora and the it's Gemma. So a lot of times we recommend one of these for your circuit build, and that's because they'll keep everything um, stationary and give you a, effectively an extra hand or two. Um, the same third hand? Yeah, that's yeah. why it's called a third hand or a helping hand. Um, it's like a friend there to hold something still for you. So I'll often use it uh, to solder two wires together that need to be, that aren't going to um, like be wrapped. They're just going to be touching yeah. uh, because you can use the two little grippers to put them in line with each other and then you're not holding a wire that will get hot when you, you know, when you yeah, solder it, it yeah, gets yeah. hot. So it, the helping hands can hold stuff that is too hot for you to hold, could hold stuff stiller than you. I use it a lot for on-camera stuff because it holds things stiller than my hands can for um, focusing. Yeah. And um, I wanted to go to the overhead and show a little trick that Colin Cunningham taught me okay. um, for your helping hands. So yeah, I lost tricks. the magnifier a long time ago. I wear glasses for this kind of stuff anyway, so I don't usually use the magnifier, but <clears throat> I do use the grippers, and Colin showed me that if you put heat shrink tubing on your grippers. You want me to try to focus on that? Sure. Here, I'll hold it a little more still for you. Look at that. Yeah, very nice. So he put like a smaller piece and then a bigger piece. So there's two layers of heat shrink tubing on my grippers, and that way they they grip a little more gently. They they can grip um, circuit boards like the Flora without oh, scratching yeah. up the pads or anything. That's totally an excellent tip. Good work. Yeah, was it? so that's from Colin, so thanks, Colin. Um, kind of classes up the joint. Because I haven't really found one of these. Like Panavice, for instance, um, you know, is a similar idea, but it's just for your a circuit board vice. Yeah. Very high quality tool, um, made in America. Like just real, like I don't know, there's, just, and there's only one. It's only the Panavice. Well, there is, this is similar. There's only this one thing. And, and I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say that like, it's as durable as a pan of ice. So like, if you want to make the best out of the tools you have available to you, like this is just the thing. This is the version of this yeah. that is everywhere. Yeah. And um, to class it up a bit, make it That's your own. That's a good idea. Yeah. And I would also add maybe some like something non-skid to the bottom. But it's a nice sturdy. We should start a Kickstarter. No, sorry. sorry, sorry. <laughs> we should Gotta just we should just sell rubber feet we, we with should, our. We have rubber feet. We have heat shrink. You should do this yourself. You can get heat shrink, and <laughs> yeah, you can class up your tools. And then um, the old dreaded thing where these things fall off sometimes, you can just put another piece of heat shrink tubing around the oh, thing yeah. there, and um, it makes it grippier and nicer, and also like customized. And people are like, oh, can I borrow your helping hand tool? Mod your third hand. 
should do a video mm -hmm. about that. I made an Instagram video of Colin using the heat shrink tubing on my grippers. Okay. Anyway, pick up one of those. If you'd like to get one, yeah. the code today is good vibes. You can get 10% off in the flora and wearables categories. You can get a flora and a Gemma. Okay, next up, <coughs> questions and answers. You have questions, Becky has the answers. Today's prize is what? That's a flora budget pack. It's here. That's a really nice prize. We should. I try to incentivize some good question asking. Yeah. So if you ask a good wearables question, I will at, will answer it on the show, and you will be eligible to win something as awesome as this. And so everybody whose questions featured today will be entered in the giveaway for this Flora budget pack. Yeah. It is a good prize. It gets you a Flora and Neopixels and a battery pack and alligator clips. Everything you need to do your first Flora project. And then it's a good <laughs> kit to build off of. OK, first question. Can you use super glue instead of clear nail polish to keep conductive thread together? Will it corrode or melt the thread? You can use super glue. Um, super glue is a little more rigid than nail polish. When nail polish dries, it's an acrylic lacquer. It's kind of like acrylic paint. It's a little bit flexible, mm -hmm. which I like. Uh, super glue is super rigid when it's dry, so it's very like crusty and hard. So for things like the sparkle skirt or anywhere where the knots are going to be on a soft piece of fabric, like I like nail polish better because it, it dries clear, not white, and it dries a little bit flexible, not hard. Okay. Um, however, it will not melt or corrode the stainless steel thread. Yeah. So think about it. If, any, if you're worried about damaging your threads, think about anything that wouldn't hurt your silverware. Yeah, it's not like alien blood that just like goes through like multiple decks of ships and like it burns people. It's not like that at all. It's not like that at all. However, we don't care. Um, the <laughs> alien, alien brand glue. Some oh. super glue, um, I feel like might hurt some polyesters. So always test your fabric. Um, That's a good idea. Yeah, and I mean, there's a there's a reason I don't, I'm not telling you to use super glue all the time. It's not my favorite. It's crusty, yeah. crusty and gross. It sticks your fingers. Do you have any tips for making wearables as durable as possible? I'm thinking there are a number of possible applications for keeping an eye on small kids or their stuff, but it seems difficult to make electronics kid proof. Verp, 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 alert. Yeah, Char <laughs> Charlie Horse. Hey, Charlie Horse, red alert goes off in my mind. Please yeah. don't make any DIY wearable electronics for your babies. Yeah. Please don't do it. None of you, Charlie yeah. Horse or anyone. Because yeah. guess what? There are like a lot of regulations in place for what toys and electronics things that are safe for children to handle and they involve yeah. enclosures that have screws to hold them shut um, like all kinds of battery stuff yeah. and very specific things to prevent children from choking or burning themselves or tearing things apart yeah. so never will I endorse anything that you would put on your child especially yeah. and leave unattended. Little kids and pets it's up to us to look out for them and that just means um, not doing electronics with them sorry. Don't leave them unattended. However, um, I find it really interesting to take apart children's toys. And, That's a lot of fun. And and like kids' shoes that have LEDs in them and stuff, uh, because you can, they're really hard to take apart because they they have all these security they made devices. made it so kids can't take them apart. Yeah, there's yeah. like enclosures with like a, a bottleneck at the top and it's like fabric is zip tied around the, like yeah, there's, yeah. so that's fun. You can determine what, uh, what th these companies did to uh, make something safe for kids. And um, just like think about the liability for these companies that make stuff for kids and then think about why they have to have such liability insurance and do all these things. It's because yeah. they don't want any kids getting hurt. So yeah. um, if you want to make things as durable as possible, study up on what toy companies do to make electronics safe for children and that's what you would have to do. Yeah. Next up. Uh is it possible to integrate solar panels in the wearables to power LEDs after the sun goes down? I have never been impressed by the brightness of solar-powered garden lights, but is that due to how long they are hoping to stay lit? Yes, Jeremy. The solar-powered garden lights, um, I think, are just meant to light, you know, pathway lighting, wayfinding. It's not meant to, like, yeah. impress your friends at Burning Man. So, yeah, you can use solar, pan solar panels to charge up batteries while the sun is out. Um, solar panels can only deliver energy while the sun is hitting them. So if you want the lights to light up after dark when the sun goes down, you need to be using that solar power to charge a battery, like in our yeah. um, solar charging bag tutorial. Yeah. Um, we have lots like of examples. This, yeah. We have one of the best solar chargers, so if you're interested in doing yeah. that, get a big panel, get a big battery, and you can be as bright as right. you want at night. All right. Next question. Hi, Becky. I got a couple projects in mind for which it would be nice or critical to have a heated element, some to body temperature. Can you recommend components for the heating element that would be safe and wearable? Given that we're dealing with body temperature, I don't expect any issues, but are there any components that shouldn't be mixed 
with such a heated element. We have the um, little heat pad, the yellow guy in the store, and that just has two wires coming off of it and you can use it as a, it's a resistive heating element. And we got it mm. kind of for wearables. We just really didn't have time to do a, like a heat up glove tutorial this winter. Yeah. Um, but, it, but it's totally safe with wearables, especially body temperature if you're looking at not making things over 100 degrees. I can't think of any of our components that can't handle being up against a person's body and, e and even warmer than that. Um, I guess like sometimes the ceramic antennas on GPSs and stuff like can nah. get weird at, at very high temperatures, but yeah. not body temperatures. It's so. all it's all like made for regular life. There's yeah. nothing there's nothing uh -huh. weird. So check out that heating pad um, in the store. You get ten percent off on it yeah. today if you want to get it. And um, okay. should be good. Can't wait to see your project. Last up, hello Becky and Phil. I am ready to tackle the Firewalker sneakers, but I want to ask if I should follow the tu tutorial exactly, or can you recommend a better approach? Okay, buddy, I wrote the tutorial, so like, Becky, I wanted to know if I should follow your instructions or if you know of a better way. I think if I, I, I wouldn't tell you how to do it a, a less like a less awesome way than I know how. We put together the best way possible. So I, that one I would say <laughs> follow the tutorial. Yeah, However, follow the tutorial. I'll go to the next part of the question. Can I use a trinket instead? Yes. Would I want to? Maybe. Can I use a snap method to secure the flora? Yes. What is the good lithium ion polymer battery for this project? I've used both the 500 milliamp hour and the 1300 milliamp hour. The 500 milliamp hour is a nice size because it fits behind the flora, so you can actually kind of like put it right there behind the flora and not have it in the laces. I wouldn't recommend putting the Li-Poly battery in the laces of the shoe just because the bending will um, strain the wires. The 500 milliamp hour one is a nice size, but it won't last all night, all night. Um, yeah. And the 1300 milliamp hour one doesn't fit behind the flora, but it will last all night. Okay. Be careful with your strain relief on your wires for oh. Li Poly. But um, oh, and then why would you want to use a trinket? You might want to use a trinket if your shoes are smaller. They don't have. They're not high tops. Yeah. Um, however, you can't do the um, like all the velostats kind of different. So if you want to yeah. do the debugging of your sensor values, you need a microcontroller capable of serial output, which would be the flora, or if you have an Arduino Uno hanging around, you could use that, and then port your code to Gemma or Trinket, which yeah. can't do serial debugging. So that's why you wouldn't want to use Trinket. If you didn't have any other s microcontrollers, yeah. you would want to go with Flora. I saw an awesome video about that today that says exactly that. No, you even use Velstat as an example. As, yeah. as, as when you would use Flora to like get your project done, debug it, everything, and then you kind of transfer it to Gemma. Right, so if you yeah. think if you have a flora and it's not disposable to you, and you're thinking of using the snap method, and maybe you're thinking of getting a trinket and doing it that way, you can use your flora to develop your code and then port it to your trinket. Yeah. Um, I can't wait to see your sneakers. All right. You can follow our lovely instructions. Okay, let's <laughs> give away this thing. Oh yeah, okay. Give away the prize, Becky. All right, I have all of your names in this bucket. This bucket, it says things. Things. Puts the names in the bucket. And maybe it gets the prize. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I feel bad for any Silence yeah. of the Lambs references around yeah. giveaway time. Victor, yeah. Victor, with your super glue question, you've won. Right. Congratulations. This Flora budget pack. You can email support at adafruit.com to claim your prize, and I will also write you a message on YouTube. Okay. Just a reminder: the code is good vibes. Ten percent off in the Adafruit store. A flur, flur, flurables, <laughs> florables, florables, Flur and flur and wearables expires tonight at eleven fifty nine p.m. Wearables. And a special programming note: you know what's not on next week? Wearable Electronics with Becky Stern. Wah, wah. Yeah, you can replay this one if you want. Neither is Ask an Engineer. Neither is Ask an Engineer Show and Tell. Becky's out. Lamore and I are out, and so for one week, you guys are no not going to have live shows. We're going to be—I'm going to be posting from the road. I'll tell everybody about that on the show and tell, and on Ask an Engineer tonight. But um, I'm just going to be Instagramming my vacation. Yeah, everyone, work on <laughs> cool projects. Come up with great questions, and we'll uh, yeah. be able to get to those in two weeks from now. Yeah, there's no like giant queue of questions. There's a short queue of questions. So if you yeah. have um, more questions, I'll answer them two weeks from now. And I hope you guys all have a nice week. In the meantime, I will I will miss you. I think that you should um, you should watch the first episode of Ask an Engineer and the first episode of Wearable Electronics Space Concern and the first episode of Show and Tell next week. And um, oh, and as a look instead back. as a little oh. like flashback. Okay. And um, let us know how far we've come. <laughs> you could the first Ask an Engineer. You can just watch watch me ship packages when it was just me and Lamore. I think. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> she was doing kidding, and I was doing shipping. Yeah. And you can see MOSFET 
walk in the back. Totally worth it, see? Pretty much it. That was it, folks. So thanks for joining us. We will be back two weeks from now when you yep. can, all three, watch Wearable Electronics with Becky Stern. That's right. Show your project on the show and tell. That's right. And then watch Ask an Engineer. That's next, right. next, next week, not next week. Yeah, next, next week. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> see you, see you soon. <laughs> bye. bye, everybody.